Good evening from New York. The non-apology apology from the New York Post has appropriately had a non-impact impact. Our fifth story in the countdown, the protests continuing tonight both outside the headquarters of the right-wing tabloid's parent company, News Corp, and inside the newsroom itself, where even the gossip page is distancing itself from the controversy. All this as right-wing wingnut Alan Keyes is now warning that President Obama is, as you heard, a radical communist, a usurper who must be stopped or the United States will, quote, cease to exist. No, I'm not kidding. One month to the day after the inauguration, it seems that many still have not gotten used to the idea of Barack Obama as the 44th president of the United States. For a second straight night, protesters marching outside News Corp headquarters in midtown Manhattan, presumably the kind of people the New York Post was referring to as having been offended by this cartoon that they took, according to the tabloid, as a depiction of President Obama as a thinly veiled expression of racism. In an editorial in today's paper, the Post heavy on the Mia, light on the culpa. Quote, to those who were offended by the image, we apologize. However, there are some in the media and in public life who have had differences with the Post in the past, and they see the incident as an opportunity for payback. To them, no apology is due. In other words, if you always agree with us, we're sorry. If you've dis disagreed with us in the past, you obviously just hold a grudge about our wonderfulness. Alan Keyes' grudge, beaten 70 to 27 by Barack Obama in the 2004 Illinois Senate race, also one of 3,744 former MSNBC hosts. Alan Keyes back in the forefront in the wake of an interview outside a pro life fundraiser in Nebraska. The three time presidential candidate basically is yet to win anything he has run for, claiming that the new president would destroy this country. Obama is a radical communist, and I think it's becoming clear. That's what I told people in Illinois, and now everybody realizes it's true. He's going to destroy this country, and we're either going to stop him, or the United States of America is going to cease to exist. Mr. Keyes also declaring the president an abomination for his pro-choice stance, before reviving the ridiculousness that is the rumor that will not die that Mr. Obama is not a citizen of the United States, and therefore is not actually president. Is he president of the United States? According to the Constitution, in order to be eligible for president, you have to be a natural-born citizen. Uh, he has refused to provide proof that he is, in fact, a natural-born citizen. And his Kenyan relations say that he was born in Nairobi at a time when his mother was too young to transmit U.S. citizenship. So I'm not even sure he's president of the United States. No, that's not a laughing matter. Neither are many of our military people now who are going to court to ask the question, do we have to obey a man who is not qualified under the Constitution? We're in the midst of the greatest crisis this nation has ever seen. And if we don't stop laughing, about it and deal with it, we're going to find ourselves in the midst of chaos, confusion, and civil war. It's time we started acting like grown-ups. The person you call President Obama, and I frankly refuse to call him that, at the moment he is somebody who is kind of an alleged usurper, who is alleged to be someone who is occupying that office without constitutional warrant to do so. Mr. Keyes, it should be noted, is also not sure of the relative whereabouts of his ass and his elbow. The post-mortem in a moment. First, Keyes, in time to call in our own Jonathan Alter, senior editor at Newsweek magazine. Good evening, John. Hi, Keith. Just setting aside the image of what you would have to do or what you would do to yourself if you had to defend him at a sanity hearing, <laughs> Alan Keyes leads off by saying Obama is a radical communist mm -hmm. yeah. and that it's clear now that that's what he is. All right, a month out from the inauguration, what exactly has Obama done in the last month that shows he's a radical communist? Well, he's thrown millions of people into the gulag. You know, he's uh, ab abolished all private property committed infanticide. You know, what is it that radical communists actually do? Uh, this is preposterous. Uh, it is kind of uh, amusing on, on some level, even though Alan Keyes doesn't want us to think of it um, as such. And it does reflect uh, really the desperation uh, to which the far right wing uh, has sunk. But in that, in that right wing picture, that bigger picture between what we saw in the Post this week and Keyes, is it becoming clear that the GOP strategy is to try to repeat the Clinton experience only maybe without the slight <laughs> logic that was behind the, the Clinton experience, just harass the president from day one? Yeah, it, you remember uh, back in 1993, um, they tried to uh, say that Bill Clinton wasn't legitimately president of the United States. Now, he didn't have a majority. He had 49% in that 92 election. And so they had a, just a little bit more plausibility to say that, that the people didn't really vote for him. But in this case, clearly Obama, uh, you know, has been confirmed by a majority. So the whole illegitimacy question uh, is really even more preposterous. But they're trying to do what they did to Clinton starting in 1994, which is to take him out. Uh, but they don't have... 
uh, really the uh, shock troops to do it anymore. Um, Eric Cantor is not mm. Newt Gingrich, <laughs> not as effective. Uh, Alan Keyes doesn't have as much material to work with on Obama as some of those Arkansas folks did on Bill Clinton. They had some real skeletons in Clinton's closet that they could, you know, then twist into saying that the Clintons killed people or whatever their idiocies uh, led them to. They, they had more material to work with. In Obama's case, there is no material to work with, so they have to make it up entirely, uh, which makes them seem uh, even more pathetic. But as long as you feed that uh, community that is looking for some excuse to question the legitimacy of a presidency, have you not to some degree done your job? I mean, has Alan Keyes not to some degree done his job in this? Well, I, I, you know, I don't really think so, because I, I think it just sort of makes him and the other Clinton critic, uh, the other Obama critics look ridiculous. And so that doesn't really, you know, help their cause in, in, in the debate. They, they are a party that is out of ideas, so they have to resort uh, to these uh, lies, you know, about the fact that he's not a citizen. You know, this came up during the campaign, Keith, uh, and the Obama campaign actually posted his birth certificate from a Hawaii hospital online. Uh, and, of course, that didn't dissuade people uh, from continuing to say that he wasn't really born in the United States in the same way that there wasn't anything you could say that could dissuade people from believing uh, that, you know, Franklin Roosevelt was really, you know, Rosenfeld and that he yes. was a communist Jew or that the Clintons really killed people or whatever it is that uh, crazy folks want to believe uh, about our president. So there's no way to kind of end this. All that you can do is laugh at it and, and recognize it uh, for the act of desperation that it is. But And, and to the point that the, even though the, the, the right-wing site, the World Net Daily, authenticated the Obama <laughs> d uh, birth certificate Ooh, and I'm tells impressed. you the, the substantialness yeah. of this or lack thereof. But wh to, to laugh mm -hmm. at it is one thing, but there is in there something. When he starts talking about neither are many of our military people who are now going to ask you, we have to obey a man who's not qualified. When you start bringing that into it, is it entirely still a laughing matter? No, it really isn't. Uh, because then you do start to have to worry about whether some... Uh, uh, crazy folks might decide that they don't have to obey uh, the commander-in-chief. And you do have to start to worry about whether he might get across that line into incitement, mm -hmm. uh, where um, as some people might uh, you know, suggest that the Secret Service should uh, protect him from some of uh, the loonier extremes. Uh, when they start saying that he must be stopped, I'm yep. not quite sure uh, what that means, but you're right, it's not a laughing matter. Jonathan Alter of MSNBC and Newsweek, of course, as always. John, great, thanks. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Keith.